I can listen to my music anywhere with these. Now I can ditch my record player. With the face made for radio, the voice made for writing, the writing style of a preschooler, and it is always late to the party. It's your host, Ellis. Yes, that's right. I'm Ellis, and this is the House of Ellis YouTube channel. Before we get into all the fun stuff, we have to go through all the boring stuff. And this video might be one of the most boring. So now for the terminology, jargon, and verbiage, which may not be 100% complete, but I hope you, my fellow YouTubians, will correct anything wrong and fill in anything that I've missed down in the comment section below. Compile. Compilation or to compile is the process which takes our map structure, brushes, entities, textures, shaders, and sounds and converts them into something Quake 3 can use. BSP. BSP is short for Binary Space Partition Tree. This is the file format that our map will be compiled into. These files only contain information relating to the map, like brushes and entity information. Textures, sound, and AAS file data are not saved in this file, just references to them. PK3 PK3 files are just zip files with a different file extension. You can open these up in your favorite zip utility. They are used to make it easy to distribute our resources, such as the BSP, textures, shaders, sounds, and AAS files. World Spawn. This is an entity that is a virtual container for our map brushes and entities. World or level or map. These are all the same, they just refer to our map. Bounding box or hole. Our maps can't be infinite in size, nor can we map it like a sphere, so we need to build it in a giant box made of brushes. The bounding box constrains our map, so we don't see or become part of the void. The void. If you ever played a map that displays that strange tracer or hollow mirrors effect, that's what happens when you see the void. This is not a good thing. If you are able to see the void, the area which allows the void to be seen is referred to as a leak or hole. Units. Units are used to define measurement and position in 3D space. For example, the player model measures 30 units wide by 30 units long by 56 units tall. In Quake 3, you can build from negative 4096 to positive 4096 units from the X, Y, and Z origins, giving you 8192 units in each direction to build in. You might have read where 8 units is roughly 1 foot or 30.48 centimeters. From my experience and what I've read from others, units don't scale very well using that formula. So if you were to make a map of your house based on that, it may work in one axis only, but it will seem way off in the others when you run your map. Points. Points are just a point in 3D space. Brushes and patches will have points which can be manipulated. Vertex. This is just another term for point. The plurals of vertex are vertexes or vertices. Faces. Faces are planes which are defined by points and typically have textures or shaders assigned to them. Triangles or tries. The compiler tools will break down geometry into triangles since they are easier to compute. So if we have a square face, this will be broken down into two triangles that share two vertexes when we compile our map to a BSP. Typically triangles will be referred to as polygons since they are just a polygon with three vertices. Polycount. When we use this term for a model, it refers to the total number of polygons of a given model. When it's used in reference to a map, it's in relation to the number of polygons rendered in a certain area of the map. Brushes. Brushes are defined as a closed 3D polygon with four or more faces. This is what makes up most of your maps, and there are many subtypes of brushes. Solid brushes. Solid brushes can be defined as a brush that blocks your vision, casts shadows, and blocks movement. Think of walls, floors, and ceilings. Structural brushes. Structural brushes are typically like solid brushes, but can be transparent. Transparent or trans brushes. Transparent or trans brushes are brushes that don't cast shadows and have some sort of transparency to them. Detail brushes. Detail brushes can typically be defined as invisible brushes. They don't block your vision, but are modifiers which can improve gameplay in several ways. Liquid and fog brushes. Liquid and fog brushes would be considered non-solid brushes. They may fully block your vision or add visual effect. Typically, they won't block your movement, but it might alter it. Clipping brushes. Clipping brushes will prevent movement of a player, bot, or projectile. Typically, these are used to help make sure that players and bots don't get stuck. Hint brushes. 
Hint brushes are put into maps to help tell the engine what to render when a player is in a certain place. They help improve the FPS performance of a map. Curve or Brazier Patch or Patch Curve or Brazier Patches are polygons that are typically not closed like a normal brush. They can act like a solid, block your vision, but cannot seal your map from leaks. They are used to help make our maps prettier. Think of arches and terrain. Textures Textures are images that make things look like stuff, most of the time. Without them, maps would be very boring. There are special textures that define brush types and can be used to fix visual issues. In Vanilla Quake 3, we can use Targa or JPEG images for our textures. IO Quake 3 added PNG texture support. Calk. This is a special texture that is used on unseen faces of a brush. They are used to help with fixing visual issues such as Z-fighting, and if I remember correctly, can be used to help with performance. Z-fighting. Z-fighting is an issue where two brush faces overlap each other, and the textures will fight each other, giving an undesirable visual effect. T-junction errors. This is like Z-fighting, but these are caused by patch vertices that don't match the world geometry correctly. Shaders. Shaders are definition files which typically include an image or images to create special effects. Skyboxes. These are just shaders used for your sky and your bounding box. That is if you want an outdoor map. Prefabs. These are just a group of brushes that are saved out of a map editor. And are used to quickly add things to a map. Models. These are 3D models that come from a modeling program that are saved in the MD3 file format. They are used for adding more detailed eye candy type of things to your map, like statues. Typically they don't add major performance issues, but they do have some limitations. Entities. Entities are points in the map that can do many things. Player entities. These are spawn points for your map. They can be deathmatch or team spawns. Pickup entities. These are the weapon, health, armor, and power-ups. Light entities. These entities make sure you can see, and they can give ambiance to your map. Fulbright. This is referring to a map that doesn't pass through the lighting stage of the map compilation. The whole map will equally be bright throughout. Sound entities. These entities can give some ambiance to your map with sound. 16-bit WAV files are used in Vanilla Quake 3, and if I remember correctly, it supports MP3s. IO Quake 3 adds support for the AUG format. Function Entities Function Entities are used for many things, like manipulating or moving brushes to making buttons and doors. Triggers Triggers are typically a brush. These are used to activate some sort of action, like teleporting. Targets Targets are used to define who, what, where, and when for triggers, shooters, and functions. The next ones are just two of them. Target Print its purpose is to display text to a player or spectator screen. Target speaker. This is sort of kind of like the target print, but it is for sound and can be used in many different ways. Shooters. This is used to shoot things. Think of turrets. Viz. Viz is short for visual. This is also a step in the compilation. Bot. Bots are virtual players you use either to help improve your gaming skills or when you don't have any friends to play with. AAS. This is short for Area Awareness System File. This file is used by bots to help navigate the map and define what the bots can see and hear around the map. This is also part of the compilation process. Acetaminophen, Ibuprofen, Aspirin, and Naproxen. These are things you might have to start taking if you sit too long at your computer making awesome maps. This list might not be all the terms that you might come across but it should cover most of the terms that we need to know for now. In later videos, it's very likely I'll be adding to your mapping vocabulary. So in the next video, I'll be going over installation, configuration, and testing of IOQuake 3, Quark, and our compiler tools. Also, it will be my first video using my new toy. If you like this video, perform a clickety click click on that thumbs up button. And if you're interested in following this series or just stalking me, go ahead and click that subscribe button and even maybe smash that bell. So until next time, fellow YouTubians, grab some marshmallows and go spawn camping.